Take the knee. Yes. Are you ready to shoot an episode of Can We Talk? Yes, I am. Hi, this is Denise Sutton, and I have a very special guest today. She is an author, and she's doing some amazing things. As you may or may not know, in the month of April, we celebrate sexual assault awareness and prevention. This is the month where we take key to that and we learn more about that. And with me today is beautiful author, Keisha L. Pittman, and she wrote a wonderful children's book and even a workbook that will help guide us in this particular month, dealing with sexual assault, dealing with predators, even with our children. So I welcome to Can We Talk Television and to you, the viewing audience, Miss Keisha Pittman. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Denise. I appreciate Absolutely. it. I, you know, I saw this book last year and I was like, wow. And I was like, I have to have her on the show. And you were doing interviews and you're doing so many promotions. You did had your book launch. And then recently I saw you came out with a workbook, which is the companion piece to the book. Yes. So tell us the name of the book is Bad Secrets. No, not for me. So Keisha, why did you write the book? So great question, Denise. I wrote the book because I was trying to identify my purpose. Um, as I'm getting older, I wanted to, I started to think about, you know, why am I here? What, what can I do to better serve others? And, um, and um, cause I wasn't quite satisfied as to where I was going in, in regards to my purpose. So as I was thinking about what I experienced myself as a child, which is molestation, that's what came into play as far as me writing the book and wanted to share this with children and also um, their parents and families so that we can bring awareness to this to this topic and also to prevent it from happening. So you said you were trying to discover what was your purpose. Yes. What led you to trying to even seek what was your purpose in life? I just I guess it was just with my self evaluation, you know, mm. Just you know, you know, taking a deeper look into myself and trying to, and and then trying to determine if I'm going in the right direction. Am I doing what I think is is the right thing to do? Am I doing what's going to uh, uh, um, bring some type of help to other people? Um, so just, and I think it was more so to take it a step beyond just myself. Mm -hmm. How can I serve others? Mm -hmm. um, how can I be of service to others? So, and, and so again, you know, for myself, you know, you're doing so many different things, but then you still find that you're missing something. You still find that you're still not satisfied. So I think that I had that desire inside of me to say, okay, I need to dig a little bit deeper, you know, to, to, to find whatever um, is there. And so, you know, so again, it was just me not being satisfied with myself and trying to dig deeper to find, find a better way or path to be a better me. So a few years ago, I remember way before the pandemic, there was a conference uh, given by someone that I know, Tiqua Scarborough. Yes. And one of the speakers there was talking about, we, ha we le have to learn how to love ourselves, love one another and love our purpose. Yes. Right? Yes. And it's important because God wants us to know why he put us here on this earth. That's we right. We all have a purpose. He has a plan for each and every one of us. Yes. When you when you're struggling trying to figure out what's my purpose, what's my purpose? What I have learned over the years is once I seek God, everything else falls in place. Once I learned how to rest in him, once I learned how to pray, once I learned how to hear his voice, right. he would reveal things to me, whether yeah. it's my past, which led me to my purpose. I know that I'm an encourager yes. and I know that I'm here to help other women that have been broken, that yes. have been felt insecure, 
let down, disappointed, pushed over, knocked down. Because yes. when I have gone through it in my life or am going through it in my life or yes. was going through it in my life, then I've learned how through the power of God to go forward and press past those feelings of insecurity. That's right. Feeling th those feelings of not feeling loved, right? Yes. Yes. And that has led me to my purpose, why I'm here. Do you find that in your own journey? Wow. Yes, definitely. Um, I think that, you know, you hit it, you know, you, you're right on point with that. Because I think for myself, um, I was seeking things for, uh, from others. Or I was trying to uh, satisfy others. And I, and I started to realize that why I wasn't happy was because I wasn't seeking, uh, you know, God wasn't my priority. I thought that he was, but from my behavior or the things that I was doing, it wasn't it wasn't demonstrating him as a priority. And if he's not a priority, you're not, yes, you're not going to be a priority. You're not going to know your purpose. He's not going to be able to lead you because you're not listening. You're not, you know, you're not following his guidance. So definitely when I got to a point where I had a lot of disappointments, um, um, you know, when you have, a, when you have expectations in others, you're going to experience disappointment. So once I started to learn from those mistakes, think and say, okay, well, it's not a mistake. It's a lesson. So, uh, you know, I learned a lot of lessons to, to, that got me to this point. And some even asked, you know, well, you know, I didn't know that you wanted to write a book. I didn't know that you, that you was, you know, moving in this direction. And I said, you know what? I didn't know I wanted to write a book. This is, this is an example of how God works in your life when you're trying to identify your purpose and you trust in him, he'll lead you to wherever you need to be. So this wasn't a, a desire of mine. I knew that I had a, that I had a purpose and I wanted to help people, but I, did, I definitely didn't know that it was going to be in this way. So again, this is when, you know, you have a relationship with God and you're listening and you, and, and again, each of us have a purpose, like you said, but when you're starting to listen and follow his guidance and believe in him and pray and trust in him, this, you know, these are things that things will happen that you never expected would happen. And I'm glad you said that things will happen that you never expect would have yeah. happened. It yes. happened. Once you yeah. put your trust in God, God leads you. He leads yes. us. Yes. Keisha, there, there's so many things that are going on in this world today. Yes. How does this book help those young children, help those moms, single moms, single dads, yes. parents that may be married, yes. broken households, widowers who are raising children? How does this book help them? It definitely helps them to um, have more discussions on this topic. It's it's definitely a touchy topic. It's yes. Def um, uh, it's an uncomfortable topic. And so some parents struggle to even talk about this. You know, it, some have said, okay, well, some parents are comfortable discussing this with their children. And some may feel like they're not comfortable just yet. And that's, and, and it could be, and sometimes I feel like it's because of the, the age. Um, you know, because if, you know, you know, some parents may feel like, okay, my child is four or five years old. I don't want to talk to my children about this at this time. Um, and I'm on the fence about it because I do understand they may feel like it's too early, but the issue, but, and, and then also when you try to explain something to a child that young, there's always, uh, it could be a misunderstanding, you know, because you can't really explain something to a child that young and have them really fully understand where you're going because then if they if they experience a touch then they're going to you know we don't want them to think that all touches are, are bad touches so it could be misleading but then I get and the reason why I'm on the fence is because there's sometimes where children are touch three or four years old so and then because we're not having that discussion it's continuing to happen because you know, parents are thinking, okay, well, I'm going to wait until my child is eight, nine, 10 years old to have this discussion. Um, so I think that the book is, is, is very good because even if your child cannot read, yet the parent can still have that, have a discussion with their child and read it, or, or I guess explain it in the way that they want to explain it. Because if your child can't read, they don't know exactly what's in the book. But you can start that conversation and still um, explain it in a way that you're comfortable in explaining it instead of not having that discussion at all. Because in my home, we didn't have that discussion. So when things were happening with me, um, I didn't know what was happening. I, it was never a discussion in my home. So it just, you know, it, 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 I just let it continue to happen, especially in my case when 
um, it was someone that was born into my home. So it wasn't a stranger and where I felt like, oh, well, you know, I'm uncomfortable. I don't know this person, but if they're in your home, you know, they're grooming you, you know, they're making you feel like, you know, you're, you know, you know them, you could trust them. So again, I just feel like with the book being on um, a bookshelf in, in a home, in the schools, um, foster homes, wherever you choose to have it, it's, it's promoting the conversation. And with that said, I, I love that, yes. but this has to be in larger venues yes, across this nation and across this world. Yes. Um, I know children are, are, are young and they cannot comprehend their cognitive learning ability may not be able to, they may not be able to comprehend that at this moment. However, yes. it's up to the parents to yes. guard them and safeguard them from predators, even, yes. you know, like a little, like, little kids when I was a little girl I didn't sit on men's laps That's you right. understand because That's my right. mom or my grandmother or they taught us I, I have a girlfriend who she was a little girl I think she was like two years old old and yeah. she started coming to church she yeah. refused she would not let her daughter play with other um older children meaning oh you're so cute let me pick you up and put you on my lap no you know, you have to be aware of even taking your children to even daycare. You have yes. to be careful. You yes. have to be mindful. And yes. sometimes parents are lackadaisy or don't think about those things. And yes. the predators are out there. But what happens, Denise, for all the other cases when we don't have a camera? You know? Absolutely. And that's why this book is so important, because we're not going to be able to video everything that happens, you know, and, and, and you brought up a good point, you know, because, you know, someone said, you know, said the same thing as you said, oh, well, you know, when you were younger, you know, I didn't let you sit on anyone's lap and, you know, I didn't let you, you know, do these things, but even though that what didn't happen, um, but what, what, but with a predator, what they do is again, they wait until you're alone with them Absolutely. And, and these things happen. So of course they're not going to uh, let you sit in their lap in front of other people because they Absolutely. know that be a red flag to them. They do all these things behind the scene, you know, if it's late or if there's nobody around. So that's their MO. You don't want parents to think that, oh, well, you know, I don't see anything happening in, in front of me or I don't let, you know, my child sit on anyone's lap. Those it's Usually these things are not happening in your presence. Right. It's happening when either you're sleeping, you're not home, um, you know, when you're not available. So again, don't think that because you don't see it, it's not happening. Don't think that because, oh, well, my, my child is only in a daycare with other children and it's not happening. Because keep in mind that your, your child is with other children that could be molested. And then, and then what are they going to do? They're going to reciprocate, you know, and, and, you know, what they see, what, what they had happened to them. So although you're thinking, oh, well, they're just around children, they're not around adults. Right, but you're, but the other children are around adults that may have touched them, and then they're going to come around and start touching your children. So again, if we have to figure out a way to feel comfortable having this discussion. And um, and again, this book is just a conversation starter to bring more awareness, but, but like you said, it's up to the parent to... Uh, uh, dictate and 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 um, structure how that conversation will go. You know, it, you know, it, are we going to, you know, keep it on two? Are we going to keep it on four? Are we going to keep it on five? We need to keep it on something. It should never be zero, but we need to have this discussion because I'm just worried that this is something that's continuing to happen. All right, I I love it. I love this conversation, and I can see this in workshops. This yes. book is not only going to touch. Uh, parents and children, but and and schools, perhaps schools, perhaps forums yes. dealing with uh, this type of abuse, yes. sexual abuse, and yes. then you know October is domestic violence abuse month, awareness yes. month, and yes. so these discussions with certain people that have experienced this, because there's so many men, there's so many women, there's so many children that have written books that have um share their testimony of what has happened to them. But if yes. you, once you get into a forum and make it more aware and available to people, get the word out there that, hey, this is happening. Hey, we need to do or change whatever we need to do or change to safeguard our children, safeguard yes. our women, safeguard our men, because yes. they're out there. These yes. predators are out there. Yes. And the thing is, we must be aware. And I think your book 
does just that and makes people yeah. aware. I, I I actually bought the book. I bought the ebook and Thank I've been you. reading it and I just love what you've done and what you're doing. So tell me a little bit about the workbook because it's an activity type of book. Tell us about that. Yes. Yeah, so the activity book was actually um, something that I had in mind and something mm -hmm. that I wanted to take to another level just to have it as a more interactive discussion and activity for the children to go along with the book. Um, a, a friend of mine who was also an artist kind of uh, pushed it out to me, you know, quicker than I than I wanted than I expected it to happen. So again, that's another example of how of how God works. You know, He puts people um, in your path when it's time for you to do the work and you may feel like, okay, I may, I need, I, I may need a little t more time or I'm not ready. God said, you, you're ready. Cause, because look at the book, this book is, you know, out maybe uh, six months after the, the activity book was out six months after the, the reading book was available. The activity book is really to piggyback off of the book. Um, just, just really um, providing the children with affirmations. Um, you know, reminded them that they're loved, reminded them that, you know, if they're touched, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not their fault. Um, um, giving them like um, uh, word searches. Um, they um, also have some type of coloring activity. So just to really not always make it a sad subject, yes. but, but also to, you know, to just to remind them how important they are, but to let them know that this is an important subject. And if, it, if you do experience it, it's not your fault, you know, who to talk to, you know, and, and I think that the, the main purpose of the book of, of me wanting to write it is just to let the children know that they're not alone. Because I think that when I was experiencing this, experiencing this as a child, you know, you just think that it's just you, you just think that it just, it's just happening to you, or you may think that it's normal and other, and if it is happening, other people, other people may, it may be happening to other people, but is it normal? Is it just me? So I think that with this book, um, again, it, it brings awareness, it brings more discussions, but also it, it lets children know that they're not alone. And I want you know, children to feel comfortable you know, talking about um, you know, their bodies and understanding, and understanding that it's their bodies and no one's supposed to violate it. And if you say no, it's no. So, it, so again, it's, it's, it's important. And one of the things that I've noticed, Denise, is when I uh, went to an elementary school, and I was speaking to some of the fourth and fifth graders about the book. So I read the book and you know they, they had some great questions. But what I noticed is that when I started to talk about the private body parts, that's when I started to see that they were uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So and so I had so I had so I had to explain to them, I said, okay, well, you see where you start to talk about your private body parts where you feel uncomfortable. Well, you know, that's why some people don't want to talk about this. That's why, you know, um, you know, some parents don't want to talk about it. That's why some children don't want to talk about it because they're uncomfortable talking about their own private body parts. So, um, so that's why we, you know, we, we created this book so that it's, you know, it's on your table, it's in your, it's on your bookshelf to let you know that you, you shouldn't be afraid to, you know, to say these type of things. And so in the book, you know, we, I, you know, I touched on the exact names of the private body parts and some people were on the fence about it. Um, you know, some people said, um, you know, yeah, yeah, yes, I want my children my children to know what the real name, the private body parts are, just so there's not any misunderstanding. Yes. But then, but then, you know, but then some people said, oh, well, you know, I'm not sure if I want them to, to use that name. So, but I clearly wrote in the book that, you know, use a name that you're comfortable with using, you know, you, you know, but, but we still want you to know what those, what the names are. So if you're trying to identify something that happened, you know, we don't want to speak different languages or different words. We want to be clear right. on, so yeah, I call it this, but this is what, you know, this is what this word really is. So again, you know, the children definitely was feeling uncomfortable um, when we touched on the private body parts. And, um, but, you know, and, and that's where I tried to chime in and let them know that, you know, it's okay, um, you know, to say these things and, you know, and understand that that is yours and it's, you know, and it's your territory and no one's supposed to violate it and know that it's okay to let someone know if you're uncomfortable or yeah. if someone did anything inappropriately. And I understand some parents' hesitation um, for their children to know about this thing at an early age. Yes. Yet, if the parents are concerned about that, yes. are they also concerned about all the other things that their children at an early age are subjected to? Whether That's right. it's vile music, whether it's vile television shows, and even our cartoons That's are right. very sexually oriented and 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 the vileness of you're teaching children at a very early age with certain books dealing with
same sex, you know, relationships. That's right. That's right. So if you can, if you allow your children to learn about that in schools, our children are learning about these things in schools. With when we were growing up, did you ever experience that in school? Learning about uh, male males and females and females getting together. Oh, no. But no. now it's blatant. And if our children can learn about that, and even their schools, very popular brand name companies that are showcasing our children in promoting gay and lesbian acts or gay and lesbian lifestyles or other type of lifestyles, violence yes. of all natures, teaching them about guns and yes. Yes. hitting one another and disrespecting parents. Yes. This, this is what's going on not only in our schools, but yes. on television. I can, I watched a cartoon and I couldn't believe it that this, whatever creature it was, was hitting its grandmother across the head like yeah. it was okay and yelling yeah. at the grandmother. But this is a cartoon. Yes. And yes. our children, children are sitting there. <laughs> right. And two and three and four years old. Yes. That's okay. But yes. to teach them about their personal body parts and that God made your body. Yes. This body, yeah. the Lord gave every part of the body. God created it. Yes. So it's natural to know about your body, you know? Yes. Yeah. And we have to, you have to teach the children, you know, early. Yes. What yes. not to do, what's appropriate touch and what's not an appropriate touch. So I'm so glad you wrote this book. Yeah, I'm so you. glad you have the workbook. And I'm looking forward to great hearing even more about what you have coming up. What's your, what are you thinking of next to do? Maybe weeks until into the book being, re, being released. Yes. I was invited to an elementary school to read the book and have a discussion about the book. So that was great. And it was well received. And the children had great questions. Um and um, so I think definitely we're going to stay on this topic for a yes. while because I don't want it to, you know, be a hot topic for a moment and then disappear because even as, as children, you know, you know, they're in elementary school now, but then they're, they're graduating and they're out of elementary school. But guess what? New children are now in elementary school. So, yeah. it's, it's, a, so it's a rotating process and it's, it's a never ending process. So I want it to always be a topic, um, even yeah. if I have to go to the same school you know, next year or the year after, it's going to be different students. And we still want to have this discussion, um, you know, no, um, at all times. How does your family feel about this journey that you're on with the book? Especially you being a mom, a wife, how do they feel about it? My family, they're very um, happy that I identified this and that I'm trying to help other people. Of course, like any other family, you know, they're, con you know, they're concerned about me not sharing it earlier as a child and wanted to know the details about you know who was involved and things like that but um but respecting you know my privacy they're just happy with me um revealing my truth and and wanting to help other people to ensure that it doesn't happen to others so they're definitely um supportive so would you say that that they're supportive because i i understand in in the book you you mentioned that um your dad passed away and your mom basically moved you from one area and then you moved to Long Island and she was a single mom. She was a loving mom. She's doing what she had to do to raise you all, you and your siblings. I believe you're the oldest, correct? Right. So I have a sister. And right. so it was just me and my sister and I'm, I'm the oldest um, out, of, out of us two. And my, my biological father passed away yes. before my second birthday. Mm -hmm. Um, so she definitely was, you know, raising us alone until she remarried. Um, so, um, so again, I, I, you know, it's always a it's always a touchy subject when you talk yeah. about, um, you know, having a father in your home, and to be and, and I and I don't want it to be a misconception to to think, oh well, if you do have a father in your home, that this won't happen. Exactly. So, you know, so you know, so I, I don't, you know, so I, I I brought that up just to explain you know, my truth and what I experienced, yes. but it can happen if a father is in a home or present or not. Um, Absolutely. We just take advantage and, um, you know, try to get in where they can. But right, right. So it was, it was me and my sister until my, until my mom remarried.
And I, you know, I just love the fact that you wrote it, you made it, you know, adaptable for children. And it's an, a great read for adults as well, that they can purchase the book and sit down and have discussions, family discussions with their children if they don't think that the child is, is ready for it at a certain age, but definitely have it handy for when they come of age, according mm -hmm. to what that parent feels, and then they can share that yes. and talk to their, their child. And, and that's a great, that's what you want it. That's what you want the book to do. You want yes. the book to go forward and help not only a parent, but what, whether it's a, a foster parent or a auntie, you know, someone to take it forward and, and prepare that child for life. Right, right. right. And, and I was even thinking along the lines, um, Denise, um, with me, you know, I've gone to local libraries and shared the book with the libraries um, and just dropped them off because I wanted, because I didn't want, I wanted the children still to have access to this information. Yes. And if they can't afford it, or even if they're not aware of it, as long as it's somewhere where it's reachable, if they can borrow it. Um, because again, they may not be experiencing this now, but maybe someone that they know or may be experiencing this, um, you know, maybe, you know, sometime in the future they could experience it. You, you don't know. Um, but definitely the, the foster homes is also important because sometimes the children are jumping from home to home and because they're just happy to be in a home, you know, they're not really um, discussing maybe the bad things that are happening because they're just happy to just, you know, have their own room or just, you know, be with another a friend and things of that sort. So again, we just want to, the book is here just to reiterate that um, the children are not alone. You know, things are happening across the board. Like you said, there's so many different areas from bullying to, you know, so many different things. And I just want them to know that they're not alone. Yeah. I, I, I want to commend you again. Um, if there's yeah. anything that you want would want the audience to take away, what are your two or three bullet points you would like to share? Yeah, about that's not only your experience, but the, of the book, those three things yeah. that you would like to leave with the audience. One thing that I that I um, would like to share and what I found um, for myself in this experience is to um, get out of your comfort zone, um, um, trusting yourself. And, um, you know, you know, sometimes it, and also, you know, don't be fearful, you know, go after, you know, your dream. But, um, you know, there was no fear. You know, I let God lead me. Yeah, you know, I got out of my comfort zone. So sometimes you have to take that leap of faith to become the, the better you. So that was one thing. That was one thing on the top of my list that I've learned. So I think that's very important. Um, also, you know, which, you know, another thing that we touched on is to say that um, this book is important in, in regards to awareness. Um, I know that, you know, we may have the fear of discussing this um, to our children, speak, it, speak this into existence. But again, it's, it's for awareness so that they're not, they're comfortable having this discussion with you and not waiting until after it happens to have this discussion. And then the third thing is you start to see me uh, um, do like a hashtag, no bad secrets. That is similar to the Me Too movement. Yeah. You know, but so for adults, you know, for them right. to speak up and speak their truth. So with the no bad secrets has, hashtag or movement, where I'm trying to go with that is to say, let's have this discussion now and, and bring awareness to it and, and, you know, have dialogue and, and um, try to prevent this for children while they're young, because we don't want them to wait until they're adults as those in the Me Too movement or myself to speak up to say something years later when they could prevent it. You know, if I would have had this discussion with my mother decades ago, then, you know, I wouldn't have to experience the things that I experienced. So that children aren't scared to have this discussion. Parents aren't afraid to have this discussion. Yes, yeah, touchy, it's uncomfortable, but it's definitely important to have. And it's needed. It's, it's needed, needed. It is. because it's yes, more it prevalent than we even think. Yes. You no. Know, if it was in our generation that it was going on, how much more so now in this generation with everything else going on in this world that we see left and right, whether it's on the news, in our neighborhoods, you see it. And if you don't see it, yes. you hear about it. Right. It's definitely on the news, Denise. I, I, every time I turn on the news, you know, I'm always seeing it, you know, even if it's in another state you know you know as i'm checking i see it um going on and then also that i even see like some type of a uh, networks even if it's on um uh, you know online where they have a, a whole 
uh, segment, well, not even a segment, it's, it's a whole um, brand where that's all they talk about. You know, people, women coming on, or even men sometimes coming on to, to talk about their experience that, you know, that talk about them being molested as children. So it's so huge that they made a big, um, I'm, I'm trying to say, it, it must be some type of channel. So in this yeah. and it's and it's and it specifies just on molestation. So you see, you know, different men and women coming on saying, okay, well, this happened with uh, a sibling, or this happened with the uncle, or this happened with the friend, and and again, it's happening so often that they made a whole show about it. So every week or um, every week that it comes on, it's more and more people that you know that are speaking their truth. So yeah. again, like you said, it's happening more often than we think. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and again, we have to talk about it. And I think that with us having this book in homes, um, you know, as, as we have predators in our homes and they see this book, they're going to say, okay, well, you know, they, you know, they're, these children have been informed. They're not, um, they're not unaware of this, you know, so, you know, because, you know, you know, if, if you look at the book and someone says, okay, well, what is this book about? And, and, you know, why is this book here? You know, you know, once you know, it's a topic that's in people or families mouths, you know, maybe you will want to stay away from that family, you know, but if you know that this is not something that people are talking about and, and they're scared to talk about it, then you, you're going to want to be around where this could be a, a secret and where no one's not going to say anything. But if you see this book, I want it to be a well-known book just from the cover alone, um, just from the bad secrets alone to say, you know, leave these children alone. They They know what's going on. They're talking about this topic. They know that it's not their fault. They know that you know, just, they're not alone. And, you know, and we're on a mission to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, um, I know this is a touchy topic and, you know, there are the predators out there. And then it makes you wonder at one point, were the predators also victims? Yes, yes. You know, yes. A lot of times the predators were also once victims and That's they're right. acting out what they never healed from, from That's their right. past. That's right. From their present. That's right. From their, their abusive lifestyle from, the, yes. from wherever they are now, whatever they're doing. Yes. And they themselves become the aggressor, the That's predator, right. right? Yes. And so not only do we have to pray for our children and pray for ourselves, Yes. As parents, as as caregivers, as aunts and uncles, grandparents, mm -hmm. uh, cousins, you know, whoever, neighbors. Yes. But we also have to pray for the predators. That's right. That's right. And sometimes that's a hard thing to do. Mm. It is. Yeah. But God has called us to love. And you said in your book, you had to learn how to be loved. You had to learn how to love yourself. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And even in loving ourselves, we have to learn how to love our enemies. That's right. That's right. Love That's those right. that have done wrong to us. Right. Right. And that can be difficult. I'm not. Yes. That's not an easy thing. Yes. But Jesus died on the cross so that we could do that. Yeah. Yeah. He forgave us. So who are we not to forgive others? And it's, I mean, it's a hard pill sometimes, a very hard pill to yeah. swallow. Yeah. But yeah. forgiveness not it really frees us up. It 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 makes us free when we forgive. No matter how difficult that person may have done to you for how long. I think about Joyce Myers. You know, she always mm -hmm. tells her testimony about how she was molested by her own father as a child for years. Yes. yes. And she had no self-worth. She felt alone. She felt, you know, she was just a mean son of a gun, you know, kind yes. of thing growing up. Yes. And she had to learn how to forgive, forgive her mother and father. She had yes. to because her mother knew what was going on. Oh, wow. And, and did nothing is, about that's it. Tough. That's tough. That's tough. And then when her parents became old, the Lord told her to take care of them. And she's like, it had to be the devil. She always tells the story. Oh, it had to be the devil. <laughs> but it literally, the Lord told her to take yeah. care of your parents. Because yeah. the word of God tells us, 
honor your mother and your father so that your days may be um long. Yes, yes. Let's honor yes. our parents yes. so that we can live long and healthy lives and prosperous lives. And it's not always easy. No. We still have to love them. Right. So when did you know that you were worthy of love? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I realized that was that I was worthy of love when um I had to learn that um I, I found out I was worthy when it was it came a time where it there were a lot of expectations and it was also a lot of disappointments. Mm -hmm. Um and disappointments that you experience or you know, and again, you know, some people call it failure or mistakes, but again I call them lessons. That's what led me to God because when because when you're dependent on other people or you have expectations of people, you're you're disappointed. And then you start to um, you know, have um lack of confidence or you start to, you know, feel bad about yourself or you start to not to trust people. Um, and then also when you, when you're a, a child that, that, ex that may be experiencing being touched inappropriately. Um, and I had, um, had experiences where, you know, I was being touched inappropriately, even, you know, from, a, from, a, from adults to, 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 to children as well. Because again, sometimes children get into that, that uh, play um, mode where they say, oh, well, let's play um, doctor or let's play mommy and daddy or let's play house. So again, you get to experience all these different things. So, you know, with me as a child and then growing up, I think I started to think to myself, okay, well, this is, this is, this is what love is, or this is what I'm expected to do. So once I started to realize that that's not what I'm here to do, and that I'm worth much more than that because of the disappointments and because of me repeating the same things over and over again. That's when I started to say, you know what? I, you know, I'm doing things my way and it's not working. I'm mm -hmm. doing things my way and um and I and um I know that it's not making uh God proud and it's not making me proud or make it and again, that's where me seeking my purpose came in to say, what should I be doing? You know, why am I here? We're not just here just to be here and and just to you know, live recklessly and, and do whatever you want to do. You know, we, you know, we should be here inspiring people, motivating, motivating, yes. people, helping people. You know, so once I realized that, you know, God is, is the priority and everything else will follow. Um, then that's when I started to realize my self-worth. And then, like I said, everything else just started to fall into play because if we use our own judgment or what we think is supposed to be, especially if we keep repeating the same mistakes, um, you know, we're not going to get to where we're supposed to be. Absolutely. That's it. You you summed it up in a nutshell. Yeah. We have to get to where we're supposed to be before we leave this earth. Yes. God wants us to feel the purpose that he has planned. Yes. But yeah. And even, and, and you know, and even the, this is the tough part about, you know, me revealing my truth in it because that, you know, I always say that, you know, I wrote the book in, in hopes of helping children and, and bringing the awareness to this bringing awareness to this topic and, and, and giving them some type of protection and, and making sure that they know that they're not alone. But as I started to end the book and talk about myself as the author, I was on the fence about identifying myself as, you know, me, as this happening to me as well. And, and again, you know, it was important, you know, that I did that because again, it's, 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 it's evident that the children are not alone. You know, I, I'm living proof that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a witness that this has happened. And, and I'm a witness that decades later, it's still happening. So that's why it was important that I wanted to reveal my truth to, 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 to not just say the children are not alone, but I'm proof that the children are not alone because it happened to me. So, you know, um, so that, you know, so that's why it was important that I wanted to, you know, take it, take it to another level by revealing myself as a victim of um, victim or survivor, however you want to, however you want to say it, but a person that that experienced this, and to say, you know, this too shall pass, and and as we experience bad things, what can we do to turn that bad experience to a, to a good experience? What can we do to turn that bad experience to something that's going to help other people? Um, because a lot of times we experience things, and then we're ashamed, and we may not, and we're afraid to, you know, share certain things that could really help someone else because that's our testimony. So I'm definitely not afraid to, you know, speak my truth if it's going to help someone else. Um, because at the end of the day, it, you know, made me a better person. Amen. What the enemy meant for evil, 
for your yeah. life. Yes. God has worked that out. Yes. Keisha's good. Amen. Amen. And for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. After. Amen. Amen. And a good thing about it, Denise, is that, you know, even when I'm not no longer here on, on earth, you know, this book will still be here. Yes. Thank you. God so has much. you. I thank you. I thank you for this time. And I'm sure the audience will love this. And how can someone purchase your book if they like to get it? Yes. Yeah, so definitely visit um, my bad secrets children's book.com website. And there mm -hmm. you'll be able to purchase the book, the reading book, the activity book. And it's even an opportunity for you to, um, to reach out for services. If you, if you want me to visit your school, if you want me to visit your foster home or library, you can even send me an email um, to, to set that up. And I understand it's also on Amazon. Yes, yeah. So you could you could purchase them on Amazon. Um, they're both the activity book and reading book are both on Amazon, and I believe the reading book is also available uh, um, at AuthorHouse.com, which is my publishing company. Okay, so you have your own publishing company as well. Yes. Yep. Excellent. Yep. Yes. Excellent. So I'm looking forward to more from you. Yes. And I am also I I purchased my book from. I believe Barnes and Nobles. Okay. So it seems like you can get your book, the book, wherever books are sold. I got my ebook, I got my copy, and I hope everyone decides to get their copy really soon. If you haven't yes. it yet, please go out and support Keisha Pittman. Get your copy of Bad Secrets. No, not for me. Bad yes. Secrets. No, not for me. Get your copy today. And I sure I'm sure it will bless not only yourself but your family members and share with your congregation this is a discussion that should be in churches it should be in schools it should yeah. be in libraries it should be forums so leave your book reviews and um and share the book with others you know once you re read it and and it's and it's no further need of yours pass it on to someone else that can use it i love it well thank you keisha i look forward to having you again on Can yes. We Talk Television. Yes. And until next time, thank you. This is Denise Sutton signing off for Can We Talk Television. Take care and God bless. <laughs> hey, Denise. Yes. Are you ready to shoot an episode of Can We Talk? Yes, I am.